Hi there, this is Dr. John Whitcomb talking about copper in my brain. Is that a cause of Alzheimer's? Now, the key concept here is we're going to talk about free copper and organic copper. But the first is epidemiology. Did you know that in the textbook of medicine published in 1900 by the famous doctor, Dr. Ausler, there was no mention of Alzheimer's disease? And in 1900, there were three and a half million Americans who lived beyond 60. So there should have been roughly 35, 40,000 cases of Alzheimer's. That would have made attention. But what happened with copper? Well, World War II increased our production of copper. And after the war, there was all this excess copper and companies that knew how to make pipes. Well, those pipes then turned into 95% of American homes having safe, clean water delivered through copper pipes. The problem is, is that water leaches out of those pipes at a rate of around 0.1 parts per million. And here's where the story gets interesting. Several authors have shown uh, Schuers and Sparks, for example, in the Journal of Inorganic Chemistry, have shown that rabbits given 0.1 parts per million, what's delivered in the copper out of your pipes, will develop plaques in their brain just like humans, made from uh, APP protein, and they lose memory. Dr. Singh also reproduced that study in just 2015, showing the exact same thing in rats copper at 0.1 part per million. Now, the tricky thing is if it's free copper versus organic copper. When you measure free copper, as in what comes through your pipes, that's quite a different copper than what happens when you eat food that has copper in it. Food keeps it bound up with organic proteins, and your body processes that in something called ceruloplasmin, tightly regulating it. But in your, in your uh, drinking w water with free copper in it, that shows up in your blood also as free copper. When you look at Alzheimer's patients, their ratio of free copper to organic copper is quite different than folks without Alzheimer's disease. This means, this appears to make quite a uh, smoking gun effect. What we do know is that zinc reverses that. Zinc and copper work together like a teeter-totter. So as copper goes up, zinc goes down, and zinc is a critical nutrient. Dr. Bredesen, uh, also a famous Alzheimer's author, has shown that when you give zinc in a randomized fashion, cognitive decline stops. And one of his key strategies is that you maintain your zinc level higher than your copper. I have yet, I've, I've probably tested 500 patients for zinc and copper levels, and I rarely find zinc higher than copper unless people live in a home with polyurethane pipes. What will work for me? Hmm, I've measured my copper and zinc and I'm just barely in balance and I've been taking zinc for a couple of years. I'm thinking about how I can reduce copper levels in my clients and I do know that zinc is currently the best strategy. Tetrathalmolybdate might also be a reasonable strategy. But first, Measure the copper levels in your home. I've met, ordered a measuring kit and they are available online. And my copper level in my pipes turned out to be quite low. My copper pipes are over 70 years old. Thank you. This is Dr. John Whitcomb giving you an information on copper. Is it a cause of Alzheimer's?